We are just days away from the end of the 23-24 regular season as the season begins to wind down and we start putting together season wrap-up content videos. For me, I'm always interested in those players who exceeded expectations, outperformed their contract, or just in general were the biggest surprises that we did not anticipate going into the season. And while going through some of these surprise players and realizing there were a lot of them, I thought why not go through all the teams around the league and pick one surprise player from each roster, and that's what we'll be going through in this video. As always, if you're new to the channel and you like this type of content, it would mean a lot to me if you subscribe to help the channel grow. Initially, I had a goal of hitting 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year, but given we've already surpassed that, let's see if we can hit 75,000 by the end of 2024. And in return, I'll be providing more NBA content like this. Now, I'm going to be going through some of these rather quickly, given we're going to be looking at players from all 30 teams. And to avoid this being a 30 minute long video, we'll touch more briefly on some of them. And a few call outs by picking a team's most surprising player this season means surprising in a good way, not surprising in the sense that they were much worse than we had anticipated, and I'm basing a lot of this off how they showed up compared to last season, how they played relative to their contract, and how much they impacted winning for their team. And in no particular order, let's start with the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavs will be making the playoffs this season after missing the play-in last year. They had a great year when I think there was a lot of question marks about how good they could be given the disappointing year that they had the season prior. And while Luka has been amazing and a prime candidate for the MVP award, Kyrie Irving, in my view, has been a lot better than expected this year. But I wouldn't say either of their performances this season have been overwhelmingly surprising or unexpected. For the Mavs, I grappled back and forth between two players, and that was Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford. Lively mainly because I had assumed he likely wasn't going to be getting much playing time as a rookie, and really played his way into the starting lineup for most of the season as a great finisher at the rim, good rebounder, great rim protector. But I'm actually going to go with Daniel Gafford, who I know hasn't played for the Mavs all season long after he was acquired in that trade with the Wizards, but Gafford has been a perfect fit for the Mavs and has been incredible this season, particularly with the Dallas Mavericks, in which he's been able to boost their offensive rebounding and second chance points, a lob threat that is great in the pick and roll with Luka Doncic. He's one of the better rim protectors in the league. Like, I liked this trade for the Mavericks when they initially made it, but I did not expect him to fit so well and impact winning so much for the Mavericks to close out the season. Next, let's do the Houston Rockets. This one is tough because I think before Shengun went down with that injury, there was no question that it was going to be him, but then the Rockets started playing better and went on a 10-game winning streak when Jalen Green was looking like a superstar in the making out there. And you thought, eh, well, maybe Shengun is holding this team back. I don't actually believe that to be the case by the way but even despite the injury i still have shangun as the rockets most surprising player as green has still been a little up and down in his play this season and while you were seeing the progress and growth from shangun last season i don't think most of us had anticipated he would be making this kind of jump where he was arguably one of the top 10 centers in the league and improving nearly every facet of his game it's unfortunate he got injured because it's going to take away his eligibility to win the most improved player of the year award which he was a top candidate for but regardless an incredible season for shangun He's been the Rockets' most surprising player. Let's do the New Orleans Pelicans next. This one is actually pretty easy to me, and I know some will disagree with it, but uh, I think it's Zion Williamson. And he's mainly been a surprise because, guess what? He's actually been relatively healthy for the whole entire season. I mean, for a player whose career has been riddled with injuries and missed a good portion of games available to him, this year he's played in most of the games of his career. He's still been the Zion that we once saw, if not more dominant with his ability to get to the basket. This season, he's putting up 23 points per game, near six rebounds and five assists, shooting 57% from the field. While the numbers overall may not be that surprising, again, the biggest surprise here is seeing Zion healthy for the full season. Let's do the Grizzlies next. This one is also tough because the Grizzlies season across the board was not at all what we had expected between the jaw suspension and then coming back briefly, all but to have a season ending injury. Desmond Bain missing quite a bit of time. Marcus Smart missing good amount of the season after they traded for him. I mean, I guess the biggest surprise here has really got to be Gigi Jackson, the youngest player in the NBA, just turned 19, who the Grizzlies picked up in the second round of the draft, and he's played very well for them. We'll see if he can continue that when the Grizzlies are back to being in a position of winning, but for how young he is, being a second rounder, can shoot it from outside, very athletic and agile with the ball, I think if you had to take one surprise player on for this season for the Grizzlies, it's Jackson, mainly because I'm sure most had assumed he would barely be getting any playing time this year. Next up, we've got the San Antonio Spurs, and while I know some will say this really wasn't that much of a surprise because there was so much hype surrounding the kid entering the league, but yeah, I mean, it's still Victor Wembanyama, mainly because a lot of other players on their roster have been somewhat disappointing, but even that aside, you can't sit there and
there and say that Wemby hasn't lived up to the hype thus far anyway in his rookie season. Yes, the Spurs didn't win a lot of games, but Wemby has had one of the most dominant rookie seasons in NBA history by the numbers. I made an entire video on that, by the way, if you want to understand more why. But yeah, I'm putting Wemby as the Spurs' most surprising player for this season. Let's do the Orlando Magic now, a team that has been one of the biggest surprises of the season in general, going from being a bottom five team in the Eastern Conference. Most people projected them to win around 38 to 40 games, and now they're sitting top five in the Eastern Conference and poised to make the playoffs for the first time in four years. But as far as the guy who's been the most surprising for this team has to be Jalen Suggs. Yes, Paolo Boncaro has been great, was selected to his first All-Star game in just his sophomore season, but I wouldn't say there is a player on the Magic who has taken quite a big of a leap as Suggs has year over year. Because not only has Suggs improved his overall defense, which he was already great at, but he's improved his offense immensely and becoming a legit three-point threat with his first two seasons where he was almost seen as a liability on offense for the Magic, going from shooting 21% from three on four attempts per game, having one of the lowest true shooting percentages in the league, to now shooting shooting near 40% from deep on higher volume and a true shooting percentage of 60%. You're looking at a guy that has the potential to be a very strong two-way player in the league, and that is not at all something I think a lot of us expected going into the season. Next, let's do the Atlanta Hawks. This one is pretty obvious to me as well, even though he's been injured for a good portion of the year and won't be eligible for the Most Improved Player of the Year award. He was trending in that direction, though, before missing some time, and that's Jalen Johnson, who has quickly become one of the Hawks' main scoring options, thriving in an increased role after the Hawks traded John Collins, 16 points on high efficiency and near 9 rebounds per game. Yeah, I don't see how you can't take Johnson here for the Hawks. Uh, how about the Heat now? Another tough one because I feel most of their top players did what you would expect them to do. Butler and Bam had their typical seasons, great seasons. Nothing I would say that would blow us away or out of the ordinary, though. And so if I had to take someone, it would probably be Jaime Hawkins Jr., mainly because I felt that he wasn't going to get much playing time on a team that was looking to contend, but instead he's shown up as a top five rookie this year and plays like he's been in the league for some time with his IQ and confidence. So Hawkins has been the biggest surprise for me for the Miami Heat. Next, let's do the Charlotte Hornets. Tough one because it's a bad team, a team that has gone through the number of injuries, but I would say it's Brandon Miller as the biggest surprise, but mainly because I think most of us, including myself, were shocked that the Hornets didn't take Scoot Henderson instead. And in their rookie seasons, Miller has been by far and away the better player. And while the Hornets have been bad, Miller has been that one bright spot that I don't think many of us thought he would go on to be, at least in his rookie season. How about the Washington Wizards? Also tough to find a surprising spot here. I'd probably go with Danny Avdia because he's taken on a bigger role on offense with Bradley Beal leaving. He's still a solid defender, but now he's been able to round out his offensive game and being more of a dynamic scorer. I like Avdia as a player going into the season, but I had pretty low expectations of him. And when you consider the contract that he signed this past offseason, that's looking to be more of a bargain deal and getting him slightly above the mid-level exception. Let's stick with bad teams, shall we? How about the Detroit Pistons? I think I'm going to go with Jalen Duran here. Yeah, I would say that, you know, Cade Cunningham, obviously it was a surprise or a good thing, a surprise for him to be healthy most of the year. Also had a solid season as well, but I wouldn't say there was anything insanely good about his season or overly surprising. Not that it was either for Jalen Duran either, but if I had to choose a player, it would be the 20-year-old big man who has shown great strides and improvement from his rookie season. Let's do the Cavs now. This is actually a harder one than I thought when looking at the roster because while they've had a decent season and their core guys have done well, I wouldn't say there was a player who was above and beyond surprising in how they showed up this season. If I had to pick, I'd probably go with Jared Allen because he did improve from last season and contributed in meaningful ways on both ends of the floor when the Cavs have really needed them. Let's do my Chicago Bulls. You know, as a Bulls fan, this one was tough because I have been surprised and impressed by Caruso and his improvement offensively. And then, of course, Kobe White and Sumu having great seasons. As great as Kobe has been in making Making that leap from last season, I'm actually going to go with Iodesumu mainly because I already saw Kobe White taking leaps, making big strides from last season, had higher expectations of him going into this year. But for Io, a player a lot of us were kind of down on and weren't sure what type of role he was going to have with this team. Instead, he improves on both ends of the floor, particularly with his shooting, and that was a big surprise to me for a player that I wasn't quite sure was going to be able to crack the rotation on some nights. Uh, for the Pacers, I mean, this one is pretty easy. 
Like, as much as he started to tail off at the end of the season, Tyrese Halliburton has been phenomenal in becoming a bona fide star in this league and leading one of the best offenses in NBA history. Got to be the most surprising player for that team. Uh, how about the Bucks? This is one that is going to sound weird, but I'm actually going to say Malik Beasley. I know he got benched towards the end of the season because of the Bucks struggles, but I did not expect Beasley to be as impactful as he has been for this team, a team that's trying to win a title, better than expected three-point shooting, great at moving off the ball. Again, not saying it was a phenomenal year for him, but better than expected, and it was a surprise for me. Wow, I've only done half the teams. This video is going to take forever. Uh, I'll go through the rest a little more quickly. Let's do the Clippers. I'm going to say Kawhi, and it's mainly because he's been healthy and still just as dominant despite all the injuries that he's sustained in recent years. Very strong, all-NBA caliber type season from Kawhi, which I wasn't quite sure was actually ever going to be something we would see from him again based on all the injuries that he had gone through. How about the Suns? And honestly, this one pains me to say it because I can't stand the guy. It's got to be Grayson Allen. I did not expect he would have this kind of impact on the Sun shooting an insane 45% from three on six attempts per game. Yeah, Kevin Durant and Book, they're doing their thing, but we expected that. We did not expect to see Grayson Allen to be one of their core pieces on offense. Let's do the Kings. Look, as much as most people will say this wasn't that much of a surprise because he was already a star level player, but you have to admit, DeMontis Sabonis is having a better than expected season. I mean, who thought that he was going to be close to damn near averaging a triple-double, putting up 19 points per game, over 13 rebounds, which was leading the league, by the way, and 8.2 assists, which is top five in the NBA? No. We knew Sabonis was good, but this is above and beyond what most people would have expected from him. How about the Warriors? Um, I mean, the biggest surprise has to be between Jonathan Kaminga and Brandon Pajemski. I'm going to say Kaminga as he went from an afterthought on the roster last season that could barely get minutes to now being the team's third leading scorer and a key starter for them. I would not have expected that at the start of the season. And then how about the Lakers? I'm going to say Anthony Davis. Not only a surprise because he was more or less healthy for the whole season, but even just being healthy aside, he's been very dominant and better than expected this year for his 12th season in the league. Just a force on both ends of the floor when a lot of people were calling AD washed. So that was a surprise to me. Now for the Celtics, best team in the league. We knew what their stars were capable of. I'm actually going to go with an all ball one here and say Sam Hauser. I mean, an undrafted player who could barely get rotational minutes and now he's one of their key depth pieces off the bench and one of their best three point shooters. Improved a lot of aspects of his game and as a scoring spark off the bench, he's just been what the Celtics have needed for a team that most thought would struggle depth wise going into the season. Let's do the Knicks now. I talked about this one in one of my recent videos, but as insanely good as Jalen Brunson has been in exceeding expectations, I still think Dante DiVincenzo has been a bigger surprise, especially when you consider the contract they were able to sign him to for below the mid-level exception, one of the best shooters in the league right now, only Luka and Steph have hit more threes than him this season. And for a guy that was kind of up and down last season with the Warriors, we've seen massive improvements from DiVincenzo and a big reason for the Knicks' success overall this year. For the Sixers, easy. Tyrese Maxey having a breakout year, carrying the team as much as he possibly can without Joel Embiid. Likely most improved player of the year winner. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets, yeah, I don't know. Kind of been a weird season for them, and I don't know if you can say anyone was really a surprise. Maybe Cam Thomas, just because he's still scoring at a high level, and I thought the guy was a bit of fool's gold last year. But I don't know if we could actually call that a surprise. And then for the Raptors, I'm actually going to say Emmanuel quickly. I know he hasn't been with the team the whole season, but to see him progress and be that lead guard for the Raptors, getting more minutes with a bigger role, he's shown up better than expected. All right, five teams left now. How about the Oklahoma City Thunder? While so many players have been impressive on this team, and I do have Chet on the highest surprise list for this group, but the biggest surprise has to be Shea Gilgis Alexander. I mean, we all knew that he was going to have a great season after what we saw last year, but going from a play-in team and finishing 10th to the best team in the West and becoming a legit superstar and MVP candidate, yeah. I'm going to take Shea on this one. For the Nuggets, I mean, is it really a surprise to see Jokic doing what he's doing? Best player in the world, multiple time MVP. So I'm actually going to say Jamal Murray because he's arguably been underrated at this point because of how good Jokic is and the focus always being on him. But this team doesn't run well without Murray. And he's having an even better season than last year. So if I had to choose a player in the Nuggets, I'm going to take Murray. For the Timberwolves, I know some people are going to say I'm crazy for taking this guy as the biggest surprise, but it's Rudy Gobert. And the reason I say that is because Gobert had arguably one of his worst seasons in the league last year since his early years with the Jazz when he first entered the league. And for all the talk about how the Wolves made a mistake in giving up as much as they did for a 30-year-old Gobert, he's completely turned things around this season when you thought that he was maybe on the decline and is now primed to win his fourth Defensive Player of the Year award. 
I'm sure everyone is thinking, how can you not select Anthony Edwards here? Yeah, he's been phenomenal, but we saw this type of ascendance coming from him. Future superstar in the making. Gobert, from being a guy who looked like he was past his prime and falling, going back to being one of the best defensive players in the league is a much bigger surprise. And then for the Jazz, a team that had an up and down year, for me the biggest one here is uh, Keontae George, as I don't think we would have expected the rookie to have such a prominent role in this team. A draft selection they actually use with the Timberwolves pick just outside of the lottery. And then finally, the last team we haven't hit yet, the Portland Trailblazers, another hard one. I don't think there's really one player that you can say was a huge surprise, but if I had to choose one, I'd probably take DeAndre Ayton just because I thought he would really struggle after getting traded. And while he had kind of an up and down season, Season, he started finding his stride and has been pretty dominant in the paint. He's been better than expected. I don't know if I would necessarily call it a surprise, but better than expected. So there you have it, the most surprising player from this season on every NBA team. Let me know where you guys agree or disagree in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.